right, so you're welcome to where we start to take a look at the front pages of the newspapers today on News Hub. And it's a Tuesday. We always look forward to having him in the chair. And today is no different. Make a welcome. The man one and only, Peter Foyer. So much. Uh, so good to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, John. Good morning. And then you are not smiling. I came in this morning. The kind of smile you gave wasn't the kind of smile you'd expect to see on the face of a Nigerian that's ginger. Well, you need to be careful how you smile these days. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so, <laughs> <that, laughs> so that what? <laughs> so that people will not think that uh, you have actually arrived in the midst of uh, hunger and uh, sufferings and what have you in the, in, in the land, you know. So one needs to be very careful. So now you have to minimize your laughter. Sure. You have to be mindful of the environment. Exactly. So people don't be so like that, this guy. Yeah, maybe they will think that uh, I don't need help any longer. But I, you do. I do need We're everybody this palliative, right? <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> All right. Welcome on to the show once again, Peter. And to you also, in case you've just tuned in, uh, this is News Hub. We're just on the newspaper review segment of the show. We're taking a look at the biggest stories on the front pages of Nigeria's dailies. Let's begin with the leadership newspaper this morning. I'm trying to see uh, all the big, big stories, especially around the subsidy removal, which is the cover story of the paper today. Uh, the paper puts it as labor marketers fret over rumored 720 naira per litre fill pump price. And you find the riders there. We'll shut down Nigeria. Unions warn. Fixed refineries scrap VAT on diesel, marketers tell the federal government. Filling stations shut down in Lagos amid price hike speculation. And I did see that, of course, on Monday. You can get the details of this story when you flip to page four of the paper. And some more stories uh, from within the country, just about the biggest story of the day. Niger gets ready for war. Army chief tells troops. Uh, so that just answers what I said earlier on during the trail. Uh, you get the details on page 7 of the paper. Moving on, above and above, CBN moves to clamp down on forex speculators. And uh, that's the big story there that continues on page, uh, let me see, page 7 of the paper. All right, some more stories on the front page of the leadership today. Asari Dokubo. Tinobu bars, Niger Delta ex agitators from Asso Rock. Okay, something is, I wanted to say something like sopping. Like, uh, you know, that the, that the, <laughs> that the yoke, there's something is sopping there. Something is sopping, so to speak. All right, so other stories. NAF helicopters on evacuation mission crashes in Shiroro. That was a very sad one. We still, I'll uh, give you an update. We broke the news also here and. Uh, we're looking forward to get some good results that the people on board uh, were safe. We'll keep you abreast of things going on. Reps jam, the reps jam, clash over 300 employment slots. And you also find appeal court affirms Abure as Labour Party national chairman. Uh, you can see uh, the, the picture of the man in question there, page six. That's where the story is fully reported. Ministers, you've dashed expectations of Nigeria's ex-APC vice chair, tells Tinubu. Uh, that's the big story there. Let's quickly move from the leadership now to the nation newspaper today. Forex crisis, CBN likely to flood market with dollar. Okay, uh, to what end would that be for those who need? Uh, I mean, the answers you can find when you read the nation newspaper today. And the story actually... Uh, really uh, spills to page four of the paper. So more stories, Air Force probes, helicopters shut down claim by bandits. And that's another story, angle to that story. United States presses ECOWAS to pile more pressure on Niger Junta. No Tsubazum trial, Akiyemi endorses action. And when you move above that, you find above the nameplate, Otsudeko, the dollar feud at center of FBN AGM. Nema wants a flooding in Lagos, Ondo, 16 others, and marketers put petrol ex depot price at 600 naira. Akredolu's wife, hopeful governor, will return soon. There's one story that's there. 
uh, very interesting if you ask me. You can see the picture of First Lady uh, Oluremi Tinobu uh, in company of uh, super Falcon players uh, who went to say hello to her after a very wonderful, a very sterling, in fact, they put on sterling performances at uh, the Women's World Cup taking place at um, New Zealand as well as Australia, joint hosting them. Now to Daily Trust newspaper, bandits kill many soldiers in Niger. Uh, you also find, now you have to look between Niger and the Jair Republic. So it's something that a lot of people, there's a very thin line between it because if you don't want to pronounce uh, Niger Republic in French, you call it Niger. So when you watch international media, they still say Niger. Only a few of them would know that it's actually in the gym. Uh, it's very, very interesting times, if you ask me. All right, so the is the big story of the day. Bandits kill many soldiers in Niger. You find riders there. Pilots dies as a helicopter crashes. Military mom on attack on personnel. Senator urges deployment of operatives to troubled communities. A cleric, wife, children abducted in Kaduna. That's the story. You can see the scene of where the crash really occurred. Uh, the paper also reports on petrol, now 650 naira per litre in Borno or your Delta, as queues return in Lagos. Uh, below the name plates, more woes for passengers as NCAA slams fresh suspension on Max Air. And CBM moves to rescue naira, sanction banks over foul play. We fear cohesion will split our families in Niger, Nigeria residents with dual citizenship. Uh, that's a, a very uh, interesting one there. Let's also quickly take a look at The Guardian. Then we'll come back to Peter. It's very much here. I can't wait to hear your, side to, uh, your insights to these stories this morning. Tinobu's reforms face stress tests amid labor threats for scarcity. That's the cover story of the paper today. Uh, you also find just above that palliatives. Government silent four days to eight week deadline for talks. That's the big story there. Uh, Nigerians face more hardship as transport fares jump by 120.6%. Uh, that's the story there. Uh, Niger, US mount pressure on Tinubu as ECOWAS fumes over mixed signals. All right, Presidential Election Petition Tribunal, Ohanese, urges Nigerians to brace for surprise verdicts. And other stories are very much there uh, to read today. Uh, Peter, let's come to the studios. And let's also let you know that you can join us in the conversation in just a few minutes. So just keep trying. The numbers will be there in just a moment. Peter, the, the fuel uh, increase, although some would say, I don't know, I've not bought fuel since yesterday. I don't know if you've bought fuel or anybody close to you. But it will seem as if to say it's, it's, it, it looks like a free fall. Well, thank you. It's a moment of uh, renewed hopelessness. And uh, we're all seeing it now. It's happening live and direct that uh, we are to brace up for another increment. Of course, we all know that this is going to happen. The moment subsidy was removed from uh, PMS, we definitely know that uh, this is going to take place. And look at the propaganda by this same government who uh, went to open the, the Dangote refinery the other time saying that uh, the refinery will start working by July, yeah. and this is August. And now the refinery is yet to produce anything. So you start to wonder that, uh, is this really a country, or is it a jungle where things can just happen without people being you know, carried along without government telling its citizens these are the policies that we have, and then you will find it so. Labor, for me, I, I lost uh, confidence in them long time ago. So 
for them to be calling that uh, they want to go on strike now has no meaning to most Nigerians. Why did you lose hope in them? At, at least there was uh, one strike, one day strike. There I'll some tell people you, consider to be very successful across the Federation. How is it successful? And I'll, I'm going to tell you now that um, ever since Labour became a political party, they are more of a political party than a pressure group. They are all, I mean, they ought to be a pressure group in the first instance, but now they are now more of a political party than a pressure group. And what is more, we all heard the bishop of the National Assembly who was sending prayers through emails to some of the senators. And I was, you know, waiting for those who are in the Labour Party to call themselves together and address the nation and said, no, we are not going to be part of this because the people sent us here for a different mission. Unfortunately, they keyed into it and they are waiting for prayers in their emails. Hopefully, they have gotten those prayers by now. Answered? Of course. So, is that the labor that we are going to trust? People who, I mean, most of these senators who contested under the Labour Party and won this election, did so without even, you know, people knowing them. Why they won the election is because at least people wanted a change and they believed that the Labour Party would be an alternative to PDP and APC. Unfortunately, here we are. What is the difference between Labour, APC, PDP, who are at the National Assembly receiving prayers? from their bishop. Mm. What religion would that, would you, what kind of religion is that? Maybe you have a coinage for the kind of religion that. Uh... Uh, except, except we find out because I'm sure this is not, is neither, is neither Christianity or Islam or, or even a uh, traditional. So I, I don't know where they got theirs from. And you know, we've always said this, that most of those who are at the National Assembly Knows, knows next to nothing about making laws. You have people who are medical doctors. You have businessmen, businesswomen going to the National Assembly. Where are the lawyers? Where are journalists? People who are close to the court. People who have, you know, for a number of years practiced law and they know those laws who are, that are obsolete and those ones that, you know, needs to be changed. If the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary are not working hand in hand, this is the result of what you get. Well, some will also argue with you that laws are made for the people and not people for the laws. There is a, a saying that way that uh, regardless of whether the people representing uh, the larger society I have prior knowledge of the law or whatever, they are representing the interests of their constituents. That's digressing really mm. from, the, from the story of the day. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, we are taking a look at the fuel price. The, the, the increment seems to be something that I wonder if NNPCL, the marketers, and uh, all stakeholders will be able to take, you know, handle this. You've always known my stand on this issue of subsidy or no subsidy that is a scam it is a scam and i keep saying this that fuel subsidy is a scam even the former president when he came to power openly said it that fuel subsidy is a scam let them tell us who are they paying this subsidy to who they should bring them up so that we will see okay you are removing fuel subsidy. All the four refineries that you have, including the one that you have just inaugurated, is not working. So how are you going to cope? NNPCL had been the sole importer of finished uh, petrol products from uh, into the country, so to speak. And so mm. when you say who who <laughs> so who the, the subsidies so is it, go, is it, is it I'm just. 
I'm not Melekiari, but I'm just wondering what could be uh, on the mind of Nigerians, mm -hmm. especially those that know uh, what, and that they should be very accountable to what's going on. They are not. In that very, uh, and you uh, and I sector. know that they are not. All they do there is just to collect salaries. What is their job? What are they refining? Let them bring it out and let us see it. You know, uh, the alternative effect of the increase, uh, increment in the fuel price is something that many Nigerians are worried about. And the uneasy calm. And the p p people are so silent, so quiet these days. It's something that many are asking the governments across the board to be very mindful of. Um, let, let's also talk about um, other issues alike. The, the CBN says that it's likely to flood the market with dollars and is also planning, advising Nigerians in diaspora to, you know, on how they can do their remittances to the families, friends, perhaps the businesses that they have in the country. What's your view of the leadership of the CBN at this point in time, especially with our, our economy, especially the, the monetary policies that we're seeing under this administration? Let the CBN keep playing. Let them be playing because they are not doing anything. You see, Financial institutions across the board are nothing but business centers. I mean, why should I, in the first instance, be going to a POS to withdraw money, using my own money to get it out when there are banks there? And then you will now tell me that is a way of uh, uh, creating jobs for people what kind of job is that? Exploiting your own people and then you are saying you are creating jobs? That's nonsense to me. It doesn't make any so sense. Some people actually thought it was a novel idea so to really empower the young people who uh, would have been unemployed. Shouldn't they have, uh, if they didn't have such a business? Of course, you, will, you will tend to look at it from that angle. But I've just told you, if I want to withdraw 5,000 Naira from my account now, the least I will pay is 100 Naira. Why should I be paying money to remove my money from where I kept it? And that, you know, that's, that's the question I always ask people. If you run a business, yes. like a bank, yes. do you expect to put 1,000 Naira there and collect 1,000 Naira back? In fact, you are expected to have profit because banks make use of your money in doing businesses. So... If you have 8,000 Naira in your account, even if it is 2 Naira, the money... The savings account? Yes. At least the money ought to appreciate, not depreciating. So... Depending on the kind of account that you're running, well, because you have the liberty to choose what kind of uh, you know, service that you desire from yeah, the Yeah, I agree with that. But then, I mean, in all the accounts that you have in Nigeria, tell me, which, have you ever seen any increment in your accounts that bank will tell you, either in savings, in current, or in business account, have you ever seen where bank will, link, will, will uh, um, uh, put profit on your savings? Have you ever seen it happening in Nigeria? Instead, they will remove charges for, for uh, SMS alert. They, they have overhead too to deal with. They do what? They have overhead to deal with. As an administrator, you would know that yes, giving your money out as low and everything making profit? to other people. But I also, ask you, are they not making profit? They borrow people money. Is Dangote the likes of Ote Dollar who are businessmen? Are they not borrowing money from these banks? And are they not mm -hmm. paying with huge profits? So okay. for me, CBN is not doing anything spectacular, if you ask me, because okay. uh, all they sit down there to do is just create a policy that does not work. And then in the next three, four months, you now bring another policy again. And that's not the issue. That's mm -hmm. not the problem with Nigeria. The problem with Nigeria is that we are more of a consumption nation. We consume. And we are not producing. So, I mean, anybody puts in charge of any ministry, department, or parastate, or at this point in time, is, should think outside the box of the present realities that we find ourselves in. Yes. You also can join us in the conversation. The, the, the numbers will be on your screen in just a moment. 
let's have uh, some some contribution from you also today on the show the rains are here and there this year you know sometimes it's very constant sometimes you know uh, not there and a lot of time uh, time to find the, the, the floods here and there. Nema yeah. is talking again today. Yeah. And uh, it's on the, the story is actually on the front page of the nation newspaper. Yeah. Nema warns yeah. of flooding yeah. in Lagos, Ondo, 16 others. Uh, with what we've experienced since the last two years, you, you also think that Nema, not only Nema at the center, even state governments yeah. are putting enough um, you know, preparatory moves in place before hopefully the floods uh, don't come but when they come you think that we're ready are they putting that preparatory moves in place have you seen any apart from the warnings that they do give you just go out there of the streets you see how dirty the streets are people just eat and throw things on the streets in the drainage mm -hmm. and then you come out and say you are warning. Don't just warn. Take a proactive steps. So that, I mean, people will realize that what they are doing is not proper. And then put waste bins in places. So that when people need to trash uh, dirt, they put it in the waste bin and not in the drainage. These are the things that causes flooding. You are not doing all that. You are just warning. What well, about the people too? We'll come to the issues uh, around flood in just a moment. And we'll also talk about the fact that uh, the cover story of the Daily Trust that bandits killed many soldiers in, in Niger yeah. and that the helicopter belonging to the Nigerian Air Force also crashed. Yeah. The pilot confirmed today, very worrisome, some would say. Yeah. I'd like to get you, uh, you know, sight uh, of the, the view mm. of the story. Eugene joins us from Lagos. Good morning to you. I said, I'm surprised that all these so-called House of Rep and the senators that are representing us, most of them started from the from village. Even most of their fathers are poor. And they, they knew what they are suffering then and what we are suffering now. But it's unfortunate whenever they, they get to, to that place, they will forget that people in the village, people, people that uh, are represented the suffering. Look at fuel. It's going to one pound naira now. In, in the history of Nigeria, since I was gone, at least I'm mm. almost 60 now. Fuel, fuel that we have here, that we are buying it 50, 50, one pound naira. It's very, very unfair. When they get there, they will forget those that campaigned for them, that voted for them. They, we are there looking. People are suffering. A cup of rice now is how much? 700 naira. 800. You can imagine. And they are there enjoying. Fine, using fuel free. Doing everything fuel free. And forgot people that voted them in. My brother, they should stop that coming. I'm, I'm just telling you. Thank you very much. All right, Eugene. Uh, thank you for your contribution on the show today. We know the Nigerians are... Uh, Keep the calls coming. Big, big stories here today. The numbers are there on the screen. Let's hear from you. So I, I was talking about the, it seems like a renewed push in the northern parts of the country by the insurgents or the terrorists or whatever you want to, to call them this morning. The, the one that happened on Monday was unbelievable. Unfortunately, uh, the new service chiefs that were sworn in the other day, maybe they still think or they are thinking that uh, they are still in honeymoon. And that's why they are caught off guard now with about more than 20 soldiers being killed by bandits. Yeah. And this is a country that is talking about going to war with ECOWAS, you know, <laughs> to Niger. And your own soldiers are being killed by ragtag uh, uh, militia here. So if you now deploy the remaining soldiers here to Niger, then all of us are dead. That's the meaning. Mm, we, I mean, it's, it's something that many people would consider uh, that those in place of authority would uh, really take a look into. 
Uche from Abia, we thank you very much for being part of the program today. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Good morning Uche. Good morning, Uche. Thank you for having me. You see, it seems to me that Nigerians are going to suffer more. We are going to suffer. We prefer suffering. You know why I'm saying this? Nigerians cannot protest. You can't protest today because of religion, because of tribalism. Because of this and that, people will not come out. And when the president emerges, you see some type fans pressing the person. The way they were expressing where they, they can do this and that today, where are we today? The same thing they are uh, saying to uh, uh, Ashwaju. Ashwaju can draw what out of a rock. What are we seeing in the economy today? Without testing the person, without allowing the person to stay in office for a few months. Before we know his ability, people will start, you people will grant some people on television, they will start saying things about the person. Without knowing where the person is heading to, you can be today. Nigerians are suffering. We prefer to suffer. Nobody, I said we have to confront these people. Not fighting them. Confront, confrontation is not fighting. Nigerians need to confront our leaders. We are giving them too much sense. That is why Nigeria is seeing where we are today. We will suffer. All right. All right, Uche, we thank you very much for being part of the show today. I'll uh, keep the calls coming. And Garuba joins us from Bainway this morning. Good morning to Garuba. And the gentleman, there, your analyst. Let me go this way expressly. Issue of subsidy. Honestly, subsidizing anything is a very good thing. Something that I always stand for. Garuba, if you can hear me, Garuba. Hello. Yes. Can you please speak yes, up? We can hardly hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, a lot better, thank you. Okay. Uh, the issue of subsidy, the issue of national school, the issue of the subsidizing of someone, you are subsidizing investment. That's the gospel truth. So I asked the president, the last thing that he made, he said we set one trillion naira. So one trillion naira, now if you compare it, what Nigeria lose from the removal of subsidy get is more than that one trillion naira. Let's be honest, what Nigeria and Nigeria lose because of this removal of subsidy because of his policy are more than one trillion naira. You should prepare, you should act. The price is not the price for you. I myself, you people are in the studio, and every Nigeria has lose money. If you compare the subsidy that you get, what he gets, and what we do, it's more than one trillion naira. Let's be honest about them. There's no request for it. It's fact. Companies are closing, people are losing their money, people are losing their jobs. All right. Thank you very much, Garba. Let's be with Uche Ndu from Lagos. Good morning. Hello. Hello, Uche Ndu. You're welcome. Thank you. Good morning. Please go can ahead. You hear me? Yes, we can. Please go on. Yes, I want to uh, talk concerning them. Um, the problem of this country it has gotten to a point like the last caller uh, we're supposed to co confront is our leader i can't imagine buying a fuel for 500 and uh, something naira or whatever and uh, it, it has not stopped at that maybe this fuel is going to 1000 the fuel we are producing in our country so, you see, when we are talking about this policy, I make it point blank that this president, he, he needed to be on the, We know that this man is not, he's not going to perform. We know. We don't have to allow him to use the whole time. Uchendu. 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 All right. That's your personal opinion of what the president is doing. Uh, we always uh, like for you and everyone to call on the show, but please go straight to the matter on the ground and not personal attacks. Please, you may go ahead. It's okay. The point, the point I'm trying to make here yes, is that please. people are suffering. People are suffering. We need to embark on a day uh, even crucial protest. And we, you see, the problem we are also having is that uh, this is, these people 
here, like the West, they, they shouldn't uh, think that uh, this is a problem of one religion or one ethnicity or one other. This, is a, this should be a collective responsibility. Okay, Chendu. Thank you very much for your contribution on the show today. I mean, it, Jude also joins us from Lagos. Uh, good morning to you, Jude. Okay. Hello. Hello, hello Jude. Good morning. You're welcome. Yeah, hello. Hello. You're welcome. Hello, Jude. You're welcome. We can yeah. hear you. Yeah, good morning, my sister. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you see, you see I, I wonder why people should be worrying themselves about this party. Yeah, I, okay. I wonder why people should be worried uh, about this present government. Hey, listen, he did not tell you he's coming to do anything. He told you that a miloko is it, his own turn. Show you that. And secondly, during his campaign, he never told you what and what he's going to do. Did? There's no complaint. And secondly, so how do you describe the manifesto that the president pushed out yes, during yes, campaign? Yes, if you're yes, saying I'm, I'm only that he didn't promise to do anything, what about the manifesto? What about the fact that he campaigned across the federation? I'm not holding brief for him. I just want to have an understanding of where you're coming from and where you're we headed. Are all, we, are, we are all equal. You, you, you remember what's happening in Lagos during the election. And he told you that he's going to continue from where the uh, 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 Buhari stopped. So I don't think we shouldn't even be expecting anything from this man. Okay. We all know. We all know. So we should not worry ourselves. What Nigeria should do, like the other caller said, we are we are too we are too lenient to our leaders. We are too we are, we are respecting them so much. We should come out and confront them. All right, this is our country. Okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong in calling leaders to be accountable to the citizens, but the way and manner through which we do this is what we have to be mindful of as a nation, as a people, better put. Mazi Okorafo, thanks for joining us on the show today. Mazi. Yeah, morning, gentlemen. Good morning, my brother. Mazi Okorafo, from the United States. Thank God today is a Tuesday. This is the fifth day of assumption of the President of the United States. He says, yes. I say, my side enough. Well, we come back to the Nigerian situation, but what I just feel to the federal government, this issue of proposed strike, by the uh, uh, level. Lebo. It's not healthy because so many things have been crippled cr cr in Nigeria. Government should find a solution that is a lasting, not skeletal or anything. Because we are talking to say that, you see, like what is happening now in the military, we deliver us from training. I think we have seen it. The, 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 the junta is now charging the president of what? Of prison. That all those, uh, 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 those boys that are there, the same problem is that the Nigeria that the federal government shows all those points. And today, the international community has seen it. They have closed their eyes, they have closed their mouth. Now, the thing is this. We have to learn the election that all these terrorism that is happening in African countries, that the leaders are responsible. They are not close. So, that leaders should learn the election. Africa should learn the election that we don't jump to situations like this. Thank God that people are doing one, one now are doing the other, that everybody shall have the military. Let them do the little. We okay. cannot allow this terrorism to be going at no world. Good morning. Mazo, Thank Mazo, you Mazo, so Mazo. much, uh, Mazi, yes. for your contribution on the show today. We have Okaro joining us from Rivers. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I want to comment the issue of the present Neymar warning area that will be flooded. I can not believe that since 2012 we have been suffering flood and every successive government will just be seeing it as if it is normal. I don't understand how a country can survive when issues of national emergency are being looked upon as if they are not important. We cannot see a government who decides to say, okay, let's have a serious attention to this flooding. You need to live in river state or live in Delta or live in those states that are mentioned. 
you will know what people are passing through. And every government don't consider them important. The only thing that are important to most of the government of these days now is how to make money from the masses, how to talk about money, how to talk about allowance, how to talk about things. I don't I don't see how it's not possible for us to continue like this. They are believing mm. that it is like that, maybe because of tribalism that is allowing the majority uh, aspect of the country to support them because they are from that place. It cannot continue like that. Okay. It cannot continue like that. Right. So they should just to come, they should come, they should they should see what is happening as something that can spread and it will consume them one day. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Okara, for really bring that out. You know, we were on this discussion that yes. the flooding alerts that we've ha gotten this year yeah. have been much more than ever, I can remember as a, as a journalist. Yeah. I, I mean, it's like almost every month that we get flood alert, alerts from NEMA. Yeah. And one keeps wondering if, uh, for instance, state governors also are putting anything in, in, in check. I'll be back with you in just a moment, Peter. Let's be with Ada, who joins us from um, Plateau State. Good morning, Ada. Sharon, as you guys say, Ada, I'm calling from just Plateau State. Good morning. I want to look at the economy in relation to the NLC threatening to go on strike as well. Um, the, like the Tinubu led administration should know that every country or economy is different and cannot be left to market forces. In Western climes, they are not as corrupt as us. There are other mm -hmm. variables like insecurity, epileptic power supply, etc., which has made the business environment very harsh in our own case. So, uh, so allowing market forces to determine certain things cannot work for us. There's what you call in economics uh, market forces failure. When that happens, the economic uh, planners should go back to the drawing board and review it and make some necessary adjustments. That explains why we're having problems with this Naira. How can we report in the Naira? In an economy that is a, 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 an economy that is import dependent, it cannot work. That's why I look at what where the uh, Naira is heading to now. I just play, I just pray it doesn't flow towards the Atlantic Ocean. Now we are experiencing uh, um, a hike in the uh, price of goods and services, job losses, and again, uh, if if time is not taken, they are trying to say now that the fuel will increase. Uh, we will have a further increase in fuel. So I don't know where we are heading from here. So all I want to say here is that we should have, move away from consumption to production, cut down the cost of governance, practice fiscal uh, federalism. Above all, the triple led administration should fix our refineries because no amount of agencies can cushion the effect of first subsidy removal. Mm -hmm. Our destiny is in our hands. All the same, let's not give up on Nigeria. All that I uh, that's Ada for you, Gadima. We thank you for always being part of the show. Uh, you want to respond to that and, of course, the well, issue around flooding and Yes, uh, others. you know, I, I wish there the had been a, an agency that can warn us about the greatest disaster. That's that is, Nema. No, I'm, I'm coming. Okay. About the greatest disaster that is befalling us as a country. And that's leadership. Okay. You see... In 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 U.S., you have a wide wildfire. You know the bushes can burn for days and all that. In in places like Turkey, you have earthquake, you have a volcano eruption and all that. But in Nigeria, the problem is leadership. It is not even this flooding that we are talking about. How much have the governors been given as ecological funds? And we're not seeing anything coming out of it. They spend the money anyhow. And then, because they have immunity, Section 308 in the Constitution, they can do anyhow they like with the money. And so you find flooding and all that happening in Nigeria. That, to me, is not even the issue. The issue is leadership. We don't have leaders who are compassionate who have empathy, who are with the people, who knows the sufferings of the people and attends to it. We don't have those leaders. And so I wish there, there is an agency who can be warning us about those whom we put up there as leaders. <laughs> maybe maybe it's like being, for instance, the National 
orientation agency, which is also a, an agency they are, they under are, the federal the government. The NOA is even so, dead <laughs> so before, speak, before now. I mean, it's, 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 it's a moment, so to speak. All right, let's continue with the review of the papers today. Let's take a look at the front page of Nigeria News Direct. Subsidy removal, nationwide shuts down looms as price hike projection besets Nigerians. Uh, the riders there, labor, resumes threats of indefinite strike, rakes for shutdown. As crisis rocks downstream all sector over forex instability. We have no plan to increase palm price, that's according to NNPCL. And this ought to have come out since Monday because Nigerians are already on cues, very scared, uh, so afraid of what could happen uh, should that new price pushed by the independent marketers come into being. You can turn to page three of the paper to get the details with regards to the story. Forex volatility, CBN warns speculators as Tinubu approves measures to stabilize market. You also find APC Mouse Conference to end rift between governors, their deputies. So Olu appoints Balogu five others as special advisors that's coming to Lagos and above the name plate to find community policing accelerated economic development of Oyo State in my first term. That's credited to the governor of Oyo State, Sheyi Makinde. Uh, let's quickly go to the next paper. This Nigeria is up for review. Will shut down economy without notice if PMS price rises again. And NLC wants the federal government. We also find other stories. Niger coup. Consider women, children, seek dialogue with QEs. United Nations urges ECOWAS. And we find others. Appeal court affirms Abure as Labour Party's national chairman. And what I can see there is Chai. There's something missing there. This Nigeria, what's happening today? There's an R missing or the uh, I. M A N, so to speak. All the same, you can flip to page 12 of the paper to get all the details that you may need. Deputy governorship positions bogged down with suspicion, says Gantuche. And um, other stories military loses helicopter pilots in Niger as bandits ambush kill 13 soldiers. You also find the picture uh, of the day for Thursday of the First Lady. With some members of the Falcon of Nations National Football Team, the female Nations National Team, so to speak. All right? There are ladies, better foods there. Uh, with the first lady celebrating the exploit uh, during the ongoing uh, the Women's World Cup for 2023. All right, let's move away from the, this Nigeria and go to the front page of the punch today. Nara Slump. CBN clamps down on speculators, restricts diaspora remittances. And that's the story we've been talking about all day. Now let's take a look at what the customs are doing at this point. Ogun Kebi Customs seized ammunition, petrol, foreign rice. And you can see the pictures of what... Uh, look at the ammunition. Look at, look, just take a look at this. Uh, very worrisome if you ask me. Moving away from that, diesel price hits 950 per liter. Manufacturers fair job losses is also there. And federal, I've been waiting for this story. Federal government extradites siblings to United States for sexual extortion trial. They set of trees, actually. Uh, that's what's happening to them at this point in time. What the young people need to be called up not to do is exemplified by what's going on with that story. All right, let's move. Uh, that's about all the papers that we have today. Other stories have been reported already on the front pages of the papers alike. Uh, so uh, that's the way it goes at this point. Let's talk about youth development and the menace of young people embracing crime and criminality on the social media, via internet, even one on one criminal activities. These young people, the two of them, uh, have been extradited. The, the court gave a verdict that they'd be extradited to the United States for, for trial. Uh, for really, really uh, extorting a girl to the point that she committed suicide. 
So what I say with regards to our young people in the, in the midst of all the chaos that we're going through, uh, what I see as uh, a father. Uh, it's uh, leadership by example. They've seen what their leaders up there are doing, and so they are also trying to replicate it. You remember the last time we spoke about uh, what's the little girl's the who was uh, involved in uh, jam uh, fraud, Miss Miss Soma was yes. So it's just to show you that young people are looking at our leaders committing fraud, you know, and they are seeing it. Nobody is being punished for it. And so they think that it is also something that they need to engage in. Ask a young chap now what would he want to become in future. He will tell you Yahoo. I've never heard that before. Oh, so you have a lot of them. They don't even want to go to school anymore. So because they have seen their leaders can steal and go scot free with it. Without so, what, so what can we do? Because, uh, like, we, were, we, had this, we had this discussion on the show yeah. on Monday where we were talking about, even this morning, I yeah. was listening to a radio show where a, a man stole his uh, neighbor's um, puppet, the, 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 the um, tricycle, so yes. to speak, and said it was due to poverty. So one of the callers on the show asked, look, aren't you also going through a moment? Why didn't you go to st and steal? Because you're going through hard times. Is it more about the leadership at the top government or more about the family itself? Because I won't see what happens to me to the extent that I'll go and steal. It's, it's more about leadership. Look, let me tell you, we, we don't have a judicial system that can adequately take care of people going into crime. So what do you have? When our senators are being uh, held in uh, Europe and where have you, you can have people writing letters to say, please forgive them, because that's what is taking place here. At this point in time. So, I think there should be another time. We have just about two minutes to do the news updates, and I would like for us also someday soon to talk about the exploits of the acting uh, uh, Controller General of Customs. It seems to be moving around a lot. I wonder if you're getting any feelers that so many seizures, so many things coming up. Maybe one day we'll find time to talk about him. Uh, is that the one I didn't hear? I think we'll talk about him. He's doing, well, e he's doing except, well, except that he's also killing innocent people we, we, across We have the... to go now because of the news. We'll talk about that another time, so to speak. You still watching News Hub. We've been speaking with Peter Foyer, who's been our reviewer on the show today. We thank you very much for your time and thoughts on thank the show. Thank you for having me. Thank today. you so much. The news will come to you in just a moment. Just stay with us.